It's about eight minutes after start time. So why don't we start with the formality of uh, Pledge of Allegiance. But Pledge of Allegiance to the flag, the United States of America, to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty, justice for all. All right, first order of business. Hopefully folks had a chance to look at their email and the January minutes. Any comments on the minutes? All right, then we'll take a, a motion and second for their approval. Move to approve. I right, have a second. All in favor of approving the January minutes? Aye. Those opposed? Okay, our January minutes have been approved. Uh, with that, we'll move on to uh, Tammy with our update, please. Sure. Uh, just one thing with the minutes. Um, I didn't have Christina on the list. Christina, I'm going to go back and I'm going to modify that. So I don't think anything else formally oh. be done. But I, I didn't realize that Christina was on on a call at the last meeting. So I apologize. That's OK. So, I was on my cell phone. And, I, you know, I used to have like my name like everybody else. But then sometimes when you're like broadcasting, everybody can say, oh, Christina Bastiano is here. So, yeah, so I changed it to just my initials. So, yeah, that's Sorry about that, but yeah, no worries. Um, so I, I am going to make that one change. And then I did have an email come in from uh, Commissioner Abel. Uh, Ian, just so you're aware, he's saying what what is the dial in info? So um, can you resend him the uh, the Zoom invite and link? Uh, sure. Thing. It sounds like he he does want to get on. I'll, I'll make sure he gets that resent to him. So I think that's that's probably why he's not here. So maybe once he jumps on, we can we can start that conversation. Okay. Um, but in, in any case, if you want me to move ahead with my report, I can do that. That, that would be great, Tammy. That would be wonderful, please. OK, um, so it's just uh, I guess the the big the big I'll call it event, even though it's not much of an, it's not an in-person event, really is the daddy-daughter date night. Um, we uh, reformatted the daddy-daughter dance, which as you guys know, is always a sellout event for us with about 300 people. Uh, last year's event was in 2019, of course, was in um, over at the Villanova Conference Center and was obviously an event that we couldn't have again this year. Um, actually, it was in 2020. We did have the event. It was in February. So it wasn't 2019, it was 2020. That was the latest event. Um, trying to get my pandemic years straightened out. I guess. <laughs> <laughs> it's now blending into multiple years. Um, but we did it as a date night format, very successful. Uh, as a matter of fact, last Friday, we had the first night. Um, this uh, Tomorrow night, we have the second night. Uh, both were met with overwhelming uh, response. So very, very positive. Um, we, uh, I think, all totaled ended up with uh, about 60 participants, uh, give or take. Uh, so we were real happy with the, accept, the, the success of it. So really, it, it ended up being more of an interactive Zoom night, uh, but it did allow the, the dads and the daughters a chance to capture, you know, that that one-on-one that -on -one time, even though, you know, we're in the pandemic and, you know, things have gotten back to normal a little bit. Uh, it offered that you know, respite from the daily hustle and bustle of life, you know, to spend some time together. So it ended up really being a positive and the fathers got dressed up and many were in bow ties and suits and the daughters were in beautiful dresses. So they took it really seriously. Uh, we offered them the opportunity to patron some of the local businesses so that they could, they could do, you know, take out for the night. Uh, so we had a lot of businesses participate with us and jump on and, and offered some, some special menu items and things like that. Uh, we did uh, through the interactive Zoom. We we had a bingo uh, where we gave gave away some prizes and stuff. And then we also had um, like a like a dance uh, routine and and dance moves and stuff uh, that they had a chance to learn and, and put together uh, in you know synchronization. Uh, and it was led by uh, our our dance instructor that works for the day camp, and she actually owns uh, she's the owner of Mainline Dance Company right in Wayne. So she ran it for us and did a spectacular job. I mean, it was amazing. So uh, when I have the video, I'll make sure to share that with you guys because we we did we did record um, we did record the whole night. So we're gonna you know meld it together in one of our mainline network videos, um, you know, with the interviews and everything, and put that together so you have a chance to see it. So it, it ended up really popular. They 
they were able to uh, come over to the township building the week before the event and we gave them uh, a memorial box that had some craft items and trinkets and a chocolate rose since we really couldn't do real roses and everybody seemed really happy and was excited about the event and you know understood that you know it was a, a replacement this year for what we couldn't do in person but still excited nonetheless and of course it was our 10th year so nothing like celebrating your 10th year um, <laughs> not together <laughs> so it was a lot of fun um, and you know in addition to that we we have a lot of great programming that's up and running um, our, our junior soccer program just continues to be really popular it's preschool soccer with soccer shots they do an amazing job that's up and running. Um, although the turf field is covered in turf right now, so they've had to go on hiatus, unfortunately. Um, similarly, uh, we have a boot camp that's been up and running on Saturday mornings over there. Uh, they're fortunately able to use the parking lot, uh, but I think there's almost two feet of snow that's still over on the turf field and likely to be there for a while. So we had a flag football uh, tournament that was scheduled for Monday that we've had to, we had to postpone. So we postponed that to April 5th. Uh, again, was supposed to be on the turf field um, and no other likely, you know, backup options for that. Uh, but it was something where we, we did have some success. I think um, we ended up with, uh, with four teams registered. So we were going to do, you know, like round robin play and it's middle schoolers. So, um, you know, it's not a group that we get a chance to, to entertain very often. So it's something we want to definitely uh, reschedule and hold on to and, and hope that maybe it builds even over the next, um, you know, next couple months. Um, we have a pickleball tournament that's coming up, uh, the St. Paddles Day Pickleball Tournament. It's going to be on St. Patrick's Day. We're going to do it on Wednesday the 17th. Um, so we're looking forward to that. We're going to have it at Radnor Activity Center. Um, so we're taking registration now. I know it's starting to fill up, so there's definitely some interest there. It's a daytime tournament that'll start at nine o'clock uh, in the morning. Uh, coming up uh, to replace the the spring extravaganza that we annually do over at Villanova, which unfortunately is not going to happen this year for obvious reasons. Uh, we've replaced that event with uh, some new and creative events. One, it's going to be a teen flashlight egg hunt along the Radnor Trail. So it's going to be in the evening at eight o'clock on, I believe it's Saturday, March 20th. Um, and we're looking forward to, you know, success with that. So far, it's been met with positive response. Uh, and then that same day, we're also going to have pop-up egg hunts, uh, which is where we're going to just, we're going to drop eggs and trinkets and all kinds of things at Radnor Nature Park, Petrie Park, Odoricio Park, and Clemacrone Park, and just allow people as of eight o'clock in the morning, um, you know, it's, it's kind of a free-for-all. If you want to go out, you know, be prudent in how many eggs that you take and trinkets that you take, but we figured that was a good way of not doing a formal event and having people gather at a certain time in a certain place, um, but yet allowing them to still go out to the park and search high and low for lots of goodies. So we're hoping that those end up with some success as well. Um, and no registration, of course, is required for that. It's just kind of a pick up, pop up type of an event. So uh, we've got some information and promotions going out on that. Um, so other than that, you know, we're just, we're gearing up really for more spring programs. Uh, we have Radnor Day Camp. Uh, we, we did nail down the dates for that. And um, it is going to start on Monday, June 28th and run for six weeks. We're going to get the program back to a full day program from nine to three and offer the half day option from nine to 1230. And as of right now, we're, we're, we're locking in at Radnor Activity Center as far as having the camp. We are still considering uh, offering the camp over at Clem Crone, possibly uh, in a park-based setting. We're still evaluating that. And then we also have Radnor Elementary as a backup, possibly. Um, I did have a chance to, to catch up with Bill Dolan and have a conversation. I, I think just right now, due to so many uncertainties and variables with how school's gonna, going to end and how next school year is going to begin, it's just, you know, it's hard to have, you know, people come into your space in June and you know, there's chairs and there's tables and there's all kinds of stuff logistically that, you know, right now is just, they can't predict. And, and that's okay. Um, it's possible that, you know, once we get to June, if we have a lot of popularity, we can maybe use the site as a backup, as, you know, an alternative site, because um, we're only going to be able to take so many at Radnor Activity Center. So we're, kind of, we're trying to balance all of that. There's no marketing materials or anything that's been released just yet, but we're working through the details of it right now. And then, uh, and then also the dynamics of our staffing. Um, so that, 
that's really where we are right now, coming out of January into February. Um, you know, we're continuing to try to be creative, as creative we, as we can with in-person activities, just to keep people active and, you know, have lots of things to do, you know, that folks can look forward to, you know, especially here now before, you know, before spring and as spring starts. That's great, Tammy, thanks. And of course, to the staff and being so flexible, I had a couple of thoughts while you're giving the report. The first one was, given the one, at least the one year, it might have been last year or two years ago, when the spring extravaganza was canceled about 13 times, <laughs> at least COVID has given us the benefit of knowing ahead of time that you have to go to plan B. <laughs> yep. And, and the second, it's a question, is there any truth to the rumor that Mr. Campbell is the number one seed in the pickleball tournament coming up? Could be. Uh, I don't think so. They don't have a senior division, Bill. I think he's got some good skills. <laughs> All right. Before before we march on the usual path, I see that there is a uh, a phone caller has joined, and I'm not sure if that's Commissioner Abel. And I know we, we want to try to address that. And also, there's uh, Jackie Baver on there. Uh, if they're here to talk about something in particular, I might want to deviate from the the normal form. Uh, Commissioner Abel, is that you on the two one five number? on mute okay no he's on something it's yep. mr chairman can you hear me i can yep hi it's jake sorry i'm uh i'm uh in between uh events right now so uh, i will be on the phone for the time being can we talk from not not a problem at all we at your request we put the um the mountain bike uh item on our agenda and I, as i understand it the request was to essentially have a discussion on it i don't know if you had a presentation or some comments or something you wanted to make. And I'm not sure if Jackie Baber is here as well for that type. Would be respectful of your time and given you're in a squeeze, certainly uh, at least give you the floor at this point. And then we can also uh, you know, chime in as well if that's desired. No, no, I, I appreciate it. And, and thanks for including this on the agenda tonight. Um, I, I didn't, I did not have a presentation. Um, my hope was that we could um, just uh, restart that conversation that we uh, began um, in uh well last year and uh i mean there was uh, a lot of input from the residents but uh and in fact it might have been 2019 where we had that discussion um but the one thing that's changed uh, you know uh, the elephant in the room is is covid um so what we've seen is there's not enough indoor activities for radnor residents uh and you know this this the idea of creating a a, a path through a park like odoricio provides a lot of new opportunities, not only for um, kids and, and, and the mountain biking club, but think about um, cross-country skiers, think about um, people that like to run on paths uh, and, and you know, just somebody that wants to go out and walk a path and doesn't want to go to the Willows or another park. So my, my goal and my hope is that, you know, we can, we can have a, a nice discussion and hopefully at some point in the near future, you know, if there's uh, interest on, from, from the board, um, bring the neighbors back in to see uh, where they are on, on this issue and if it's something that we want to move forward on at Odoricio or, or another park or, or if there's you know, multiple parks where this might, uh, might uh, be a good addition to, uh, to the community. Thanks, Commissioner Abel. Um, I'm going to pass the baton to others who might have comments. I, I, I know that I'll, I'll only say preliminarily that uh, when this was last before us, there was I think interest in, 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 a, in a realization or at least a belief that there's uh, some positive benefit to something of this nature being incorporated into our park system. Uh, with, with that, I'll, I'll, if anyone else wants to chime in at this point before I take the mic as I tend to do and go on, I, I'll invite every, other members of the board to, to chime in. Um, I'd like to look at, I'm gonna dig up, and I meant to do this before the call, but I'd like to dig up some of my notes from those meetings that we had whatever it was two years ago, because there was some input we were given. Um, I'd particularly like um, more information on what it takes to have a, um, uh, a mountain bike trail, you know, how much space is needed and topography and, and all that other stuff. Um, uh, so I'd, I'd like to look at what we already have and I'd like to hear some additional input on that. Um, so it would be uh, good if um, we could get that from either that mountain biking um, proponent group uh, from two years ago or, or anybody else who wants to chime in. Um, and I know that Tammy, you had um, uh, raised the possibility of uh, locating something like that in some other parcels that the township has that might be even better suited 
Um, and I've, um, I, I haven't had, I haven't been had the, I think we will all want the opportunity to compare the different parcels and see if there's one that might indeed be um, better than others and, in, you know, and suitable and useful, accessible, um, no problem with the neighbors. So there's all, there's a lot of input, um, some of which we have, but additional that we need, I think. Um, and I think it would be good to invite folks in who are interested, pro and con, uh, to, you know, deliberate. Thanks, Mary. Anyone else uh, have some thoughts or wish to chime in? I'll chime in a little bit. Um, so uh, I don't know, I don't, going back dates, but Bill, you and I met with Howard Child and, and, and you know, kind of started talking about this as that a really important part of if it's at Odorizio or another parcel in the park is that we did get some feedback from neighbors around the park but that we do an extra good job at including all the neighbors and you know communicating that um, and getting everybody's input. And that, which brings me to think, Jackie, I know lives across from that park. So that may be a reason why she's on this call. So I'd love to hear from what she has to say. Um, and I'm willing to, uh, you know, I was in favor of exploring this to begin with from more from a um, conserving that park or preserving that park because the map part of the mountain biking um, club is is that they do the ecology work and the maintenance and you know take care of the, um, the topography and I think that's a great match for um, parkland that is you know has vines and things but I do know that there are other issues involved like um, insurance and liability and all those things right like what that we always come up, up up against but i'm willing to you know i think it's great that it's back on the table I, i'm glad that you know jake brought it and i think it's worth exploring okay, thank you i, I i'm going to deviate a little, maybe a little bit from the roberts rules on this and, and i see that uh, jackie Weber has her hand up in the, in the virtual world uh and i'd invite uh her if she has some comments to chime in at this point as well since we're really just having a dialogue tonight we're not doing formal presentations, motions, et cetera. Hi, this is Jackie. <laughs> this is weird we're, being on a Zoom where I'm not on the Zoom, but you can hear me? We, we oh, can yeah. hear you. Thanks for joining us and being patient. I did see you're on the line and uh, want to give you a chance to uh, chat with yes. us. So um, yes, I do uh, live across the street from the park as Claire said. And um, I know I've talked to Susie Bruins, who's the one that brought this up. And, and at this point, I mean, that small area, there's no formal mountain biking that they could do. They couldn't even practice. They've outgrown that kind of area. But yet many people in this neighborhood could take, could just use it on their own. It could be just a trail just for people to go through the woods. I, I used to take, as I was telling, her and I think I wrote an email to Tammy. When my kids were little, we would go and we'd kind of walk into the woods and, and explore. It would be, oh, let's explore the, um, you know, the woods area. And, and we used Odorisio in all the kinds of ways that you can use it. And just like, a, you know, following the animals that go through, there's just some natural trails. It could just be like a natural trail and it could, you know, potentially be maintained by neighbors. It's, it's, it's sort of like something that could um, occur organically. It's not like a really big deal to just forge a little bit of a trail that then people could walk through or there could be a little sign posted like natural trail to walk through. And now as um, the years have gone by, I now have little grandchildren that <laughs> could potentially, um, you know, I would take over and, you know, we'd use the park or the playground and then let's take a walk through the woods. So I don't, I don't know how you go about doing something like this and not make it such a big deal. It's not like it's a destination that people are gonna drive to and park up the parking lot like some of the neighbors who like using the parking lot for their own parking, <laughs> you know, don't want anyone else to use it. So, I mean, I, it's not like it would be that big of a deal, but how do you go about this 
because I told Susie I'm I'm willing to help, you know. But I, you know, now how do we formally do it? Thank you. I, I guess I'll ch chime in at this point with some some thoughts. I, I I'm seeing potentially the intersection of two different issues here, which perhaps can be intersecting or perhaps separated. Number one is. Uh, the desire and then feasibility, et cetera, of some type of a mountain biking trail. And the second is uh, perhaps um, highlighting and, and reconfiguring in some way uh, Odoricio for greater enjoyment of getting into the woods and moving around. There's, there's, there is a whole large swath of land back there, uh, which uh, has some wonderful, I know Mary's chat, chat about the foliage and, and, and the horticulture back there. And uh, it's, it's a really nice piece of property. So, um, in terms of moving forward, I, I think certainly public it, public uh, comment is going to be necessary and, and perhaps working towards some kind of consensus as to perhaps what the neighbors think and then maybe what this board thinks and whether uh, a mountain biking trail maybe is better suited somewhere else. And that's probably going to entail a lot of planning and feasibility studies and things like that, which of course take time and no one wants to hear it. And of course, um, uh, take some money. Uh, I, I definitely think this is a dialogue and I'm happy to hear a resident uh, uh, who's nearby. I know that Claire and, and, and Howard Childs and I had met and spoken pre-COVID at this point, probably 16 months ago about trying to get some kind of a, a, a sense of community feelings about Odoricio and, and what the next generation of that park might look like. I know there's some a project pending project with respect to the basketball court, uh, but that all of these dialogue type public access type issues have been just crippled by where we all are and rightfully so, but I think we need to get some type of a temperature there in a sense and perhaps groups coming forward and, and, and letting their thoughts be known. Certainly not that Commissioner Abel and, and, and Jackie aren't important as well. I'm happy to hear their thoughts, uh, but it, it, it needs to be a broader group of folks weighing in. And I don't know, you know from a budgetary standpoint, it's probably unrealistic, un, unrealistic to expect that the township at this point is going to undertake in the short run at least uh, exploration of a site and development of trail and the engineering and uh, impact studies that have to be done to put that in place. But th those are my two or three cents uh, at this point on that. Um, I don't know if anybody else had something else that you wanted to add or, or, or chat about and, and or suggestions about where we go from here. I agree with everything you said, Bill. I do think, and I was just back there maybe two weeks ago, um, walking around and looking where you could put um, a nature trail. And I think that's an easy do. I think that's the sort of thing where um, uh, under the township supervision, uh, you know, a group of Boy Scouts, a church group, a community group, sort of like what happened, you know, at Skunk Hollow years ago. I mean, it was large, it was largely built, I mean, I guess almost entirely built with Boy Scouts and church groups and Friends of Rider Trails and whatever. Um, and I do know where a lot of the sensitive wildflowers are. There's wonderful trees back there. I've, I've even walked like, you know, paths that we could use. There are some areas that would be more difficult to convert to a nature trail than others, just because there's so many multiflora roses and all sorts of, you know, um, invasive stuff. But, um, you know, we, we could consider where to put a trail and where to leave it alone and let it just, you know, be a habitat for wildlife or whatever. I do think it's probably too small uh, for mountain biking, but there, you know, we could certainly put that out there for what it's worth. Um, yeah, community input is is critical. Um, you know, even even something as low impact as a uh, nature trail can be troubling to some neighbors. So we're going to want that, um, even if it's just that kind of low impact use. But I do think it would be very well suited, and it would really be cool to use. Um, the foundation of whatever that used to be a cabin, a house, you know, some sort of house or whatever with a chimney still standing. Mm -hmm. um, that could really be a nice little, you know, two picnic table area or something. And the quarry, on the one hand, it's sort of a danger, but it's been there for decades. And, you know, every time I'm back there, kids are playing back there. So it's not like, you know, we'd be um, aggravating the situation. But um, it could use some new fencing, maybe, you know, protection around where you could fall and get hurt, but it, it could also be um, developed into a nice um, sort of a almost quasi wetland garden. We could put native wildflowers back there and actually help uh, use that site for something that uh, you know, promotes you know, nature and pollination and all that sort of thing. So it's got, and, and again, I don't think this would be at very much cost. I think a lot of this, 90% of it, 95% of it can be done by volunteers. So those are just my thoughts, but I do think, Bill, we, we need to have a broader discussion. 
Campbell. Uh, I remember when we spoke about this, and uh, you're right, 16, 18 months ago, and I, and I love the idea of having a trail back there for mountain bikes, whether it's a club or whether it's just open to people who like to do that on, you know, on their leisure time. I guess two things that I'm concerned about. One is if, if, if you build a trail back there, um, how are you going to handle people who want to walk the trail versus bikers on the trail, and could we be a risk there from a standpoint of, of you know, injuries, that type of thing. And then secondly, if a trail is built, does township staff have to maintain that trail public works um, when a, a club is in or out or isn't really maintaining it? And do we really have the staffing to, you know, maintain something else that's new, uh, knowing how much these guys already have on their plates? So those are just a couple of concerns that kind of jumped into my mind. Thanks, Chris. Those are great points. Uh, Claire, I think you uh, literally had your hand up. Yeah, I did. Um, uh, I'll try to be brief. It's all excellent. And Chris, great points, too, because I think we do need to consider that because I think that even comes into play with the willows right now is, you know, the Boy Scouts built it, but then they're, you know, trees fall and then we have to depend on our public works and they're overworked as it is. Um, I was wondering for moving forward purposes, um, Tammy, I know that Odorisio is kind of on the list of things to be considered right a new comfort station and a new with the basketball true there oh. yeah it, it it is um you know one of my suggestions was is to make this conversation part of a comprehensive planning of the entire park because I hear a lot of things that people want to do with with Odorisio Park and you know it's hard because it's it's a myriad of things that people are looking for and you know we we kind of had that same mentality when we went into planning Clem McCrone and we had you know nothing short of you know 10 public meetings you know meeting with folks and you know we heard everything you know the gamut of recreational amenities so it seems to me that this project or this this site really is a candidate for that sort of planning. And that doesn't mean that we necessarily have to pay an architect to come in and, and put it all together. But I think it at least has to be something that's maybe even led by township staff, you know, just so we can understand ideas because there seems to be, you know, a lot of people who want to see a lot of things and a lot of people who don't want to see certain things. So I think we kind of have to sit, sift through that comprehensively versus just would, this particular piece. I was hoping you'd say that, um, just like we did for, um, you know, uh, Fenimore and for Clem McCrone is that if with the township sort of leadership, it keeps us on task. I mean, I think you have a lot of people will raise their hands and be part of it, uh, me being one of them, that is my family park. So um, I'd be happy to, you know, I think you'd have lots of support there, but if it could be sort of driven by the township as a project that we're paying attention to, I think that would be helpful. Yeah, I mean, I know just um, just a simple little project like, you know, the you, you remember when Tom McWilliams with Radnor Wayne Little League came to us and he wanted to install, you know, a small, like a just one section batting cage um, down in the area, which is nearby the, the old Boy Scout camp cabin area that you're referring to. And he went down and he knocked on all the doors of all the neighbors. Um, and overall, you know, everybody was pretty, pretty on board, you know, with that, but there was one neighbor who was very much against it. Um, and, you know, we ended up in some, some discussions that really led to that being moved and not being in that area. And it also opened up our ears to that residents um, increased concerns to use in that area. So I, you know, I don't wanna, you know, I don't wanna just, you know, say that, okay, it's just one neighbor, so, you know, we can do whatever we want, but I think we've gotta be mindful in case there's others that may have similar feelings about increasing access and activity um, on that side of the park and then on that end of the park, because there are a lot of neighbors that, that back up, you know, in that area, so. I think it. I think it definitely needs vetting. Um, but like I said, I would like to see it in the context of just the entire park. We know the we know the playground needs to be replaced, and I don't think we're going to redo the park without a playground. But you know, maybe maybe that comes out of a meeting like that, or you know, planning like that. But you know, I I think that um, you know, comfort station definitely needs to be replaced. But can it be a pavilion? You know, is that something that better serves? 
you know, the greater good of the folks in that neighborhood. Um, you know, I've heard, I've heard a lot of things. I've heard, you know, ice rinks, you know, not ice rinks, but what is it? Uh, roller hockey rinks and more basketball courts and, you know, all kinds of stuff. You know, we hear all kinds of things that people want to see and do, but I think until you bring everybody together um, in a structured planning scenario and, and the great news is, is we had such a good model with Clem McCrone to see that process come together. Um, you know, I'd be, I would, I would definitely not want to do it without, you know, going that, that process in that way. And then we'll really find out what people want to see. We might hear some new things that's not even being thought of here. I think it's a, a good idea, Tammy. I, I guess one thing to the point being brought uh, both uh, Commissioner Abel and, and Ms. Baber, uh, the mountain bike, bike, that was the whole topic here today, and that might get sidetracked if we do the, 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 the comprehensive look and it sounds like there's at least some thought that that site might not be suitable for a large enough of a track to make it work. I don't want to see that issue get lost either um, and have a discussion about that because that's a, a separate issue which might converge at that particular location, but um, that can be something we can put on our agenda and you know, perhaps put as part of that uh, discussion at Odoricio, understand that might also morph off into a separate discussion about a different site or whether the, the, the residents want it or not. Um, anyone else on the board have any comments on this before we move on? I think we should push this forward and, and ideally uh, we would um, put it on an agenda down the road and uh, hopefully we're maybe seeing the end of having to do this on this format and maybe get some folks in the public involved. Um, but uh, anybody else with a comment uh, about the mountain bike slash Odoricio? Commissioner Abel and uh, Ms. Baber, while you're on the line, uh, anything else you wanted to, to, to add on this topic? Um, I would say that I think that's a great idea about like as comprehensive plans. I think Jake was saying that something about there may be a two phase approach to Odoricio because of the townhomes giving money towards um, that are being built close by, you know, and that would help with the basketball courts and stuff. And maybe that parking lot, that's a real mess. <laughs> and has been for the 26 years, 27 years that I've been living here. Um, so yes, I think that I agree with the, the thought process and hopefully, you know, some formal arrangements can be made to whatever improvements. And um, I just know that the thought of having a formal, a, a real uh, mountain biking trail there is is not feasible because of the size and things. It would just be, there's a trail there how, you know, somebody on the weekend could use it. And I do not know, not knowing anything about um, mountain biking trails, how you do avoid somebody coming whizzing down on a mountain bike while somebody's walking you know so i don't know how that happens but yes i think that would have to be addressed so so thank you for letting me voice uh, my opinion and thanks for uh, sharing your thoughts well thank you for joining us and being patient and, and sharing your thoughts and you're certainly welcome to stay on and listen to what the rest of the agenda we're not kicking you out of here but uh, uh thank you very much yeah. okay. Okay. Go good Mr. Chairman, yeah, just just two final comments, um, or uh, three final comments. One, appreciate everybody's um, feedback, all all um, really good comments, and, and and a lot of good questions that we can take forward. Um, I am happy. Um, you know, if the township wants to leave this, I, I'm happy to to participate. Or if um, if if uh, this is a, an item that they would like me to include as a as a town hall uh, item, um, I'm happy to. To hold a town hall meeting and get the neighbors in, in that area together, just to um, kick off this conversation and and, and um, start the ideas flowing and, and see where that goes. So if if that's something that um, Tammy and, and the board would uh, be interested in, let me know and and I'm, and I'm willing to set that up. And, and just to follow up on on Jackie's comments, and I appreciate Jackie joining us tonight. Um, uh, just a, a follow up, you know, as part of the, the 2019 bond, there is money in there for the basketball court. Um, uh, as part of the, the submersion development, uh, I believe he has uh, given $125,000 to the township that was um, um, 
uh, targeted for Ordery Seal Park because that is the the closest park to that development. Um, and there's and there was talks about using that for the parking lot, or or some other amenity if that's uh, if that's what um, what was chosen. But you know those those two pots of money are out there to to start some project. Um, and I would you know I I would just like to see something started. Uh, sooner rather than later. I don't want to wait four to six years to see that park, um, see see you know see what the the future holds. I, I'd like to see, you know you know I'd like my kids to be able to enjoy it um, over the next couple of years. That's great. That, thanks, Commissioner Abel. I know that um, I think I either Claire or I made reference to Howard uh, Childs and, and Claire Gerton and myself got together to try to get that type of dialogue at least uh, how to go about it with Howard. And certainly, it always is helpful to have. Uh, folks uh, with the township to assist in that. Uh, I know I, for one, whether it's in the in a formal sense of this board or something else, would be happy to participate in the town hall and uh, bring back things to this board. I know Claire would be, was, and, and Howard Childs couldn't join us tonight would be as well. So, and, and I'm happy to chat with you offline as well about that. I'm sure, I'm sure Claire and Howard would be, and probably most of the board, to try to help you or to get a dialogue going, as I agree with the comments here that that uh, Ultimately, it's a park that's going to get attention, uh, or more attention, I should say, and uh, it's better to have it be done a comprehensive process like we've had with the other parks. Yep, I, I agree, and, and thanks again for um, having this discussion tonight, and uh, I think that's a good idea to talk offline to see um, how best to, to go forward with the next steps. Okay. Well, well thank, thank you. Thank you very much. We're gonna, you're, you're also welcome, Commissioner, able to stay on the line, but uh, we would be uh, addressed the topics that folks were, we knew we were on the line for, so... Uh, we're going to move okay, on. Thank the, you. Thank you. Uh, we're going to move on with the, uh, the regular agenda, and um, uh, we we do not have a, a BOC member here, so we'll skip the BOC report. Um, we'll move on to the uh, school district report. I think Sarah's still along the line. Maybe not. Yes. Great. Mm -hmm. I I understand we're going to have some more people in our schools soon. Yes. Um, we do the exciting news for anybody who didn't catch it this afternoon. The, excuse me, I have a hiccup, so I went off video. Um, All right, catch you. The, <laughs> uh, back the elementary schools will be moving to phase one on Thursday, February 25th. There, it's going to be phased in. I think I haven't read the email in detail, but I think it starts K to two. But people with elementary school students, I'm sure, are already aware or immediately scrambling to another <laughs> <laughs> website to find the actual answers to that. It feels um, like Christmas, by the way. <laughs> I, now I read it to my kids. I'm like, do you realize what's going to happen soon? So good job. You know, I have to tell you, a few minutes ago. So my middle schooler won't go back. She's done. She's, she's enjoying her, her <laughs> time at home. She, she attends school in shorts every day. She can roll out of bed 20 minutes before class starts. She gets mad when there's not a mask break because she likes to run downstairs for a snack while everybody else gets a mask break. <laughs> so not everybody wants to be back in the classroom, but I think it, I think on the whole, it will be good for the elementary school students. And I think that's that's exciting. Yeah. Um, and I'm sure there'll be more information to come from the administration about that. But I know they wanted to give everybody at least a two weeks notice. So that's why um, the notice came out this afternoon. Um, the other thing, and I, I'm sure Tammy knows something about this, but I just, because I sit on the facilities committee, I want to make sure people are aware. Um, I know the tap trail construction is starting soon. Um, and part of that, as people probably know by now, um, runs along the Lancaster Avenue border of uh, Radnor High School. As, and my understanding is that in the coming weeks, as part of that, they're gonna be tagging certain trees that need to be removed. Many of them are old or unhealthy. So I don't want everybody to think we're taking down you know, beautiful foliage, but I know people in this community are sensitive about it. So I wanna make sure we raise the issue here. There is gonna be some removal um, you know, when the time comes up, there will be removal of trees along there, but there is ample, um, ample replacement of those trees that will go back in once the trail project is completed. But so people should look for some tree removal in the coming weeks and actual um, trail construction in the coming months. I'm sure the, the um, township will put out plenty of notices about it, but the, it, it's all going to kind of coincide because construction at the high school, um, if the board approves, so we've gone out to bid for the project at the high school. Uh, if the bids come in in range and the board approves that project, uh, construction at the high school is started, slated to start in uh, mid-April. So it will be lots of activity there along Lancaster Avenue and people should plan accordingly and maybe reroute their, 
<laughs> standard travel uh, paths. Uh, thank you very much, uh, Sarah. Sure. And of course, uh, to the administration and, and the board, uh, thanks again for all the efforts uh, through these difficult times for everybody. And um, thanks for taking some time to be with us tonight, because I'm sure you have 65 emails from some, maybe a couple happy people tonight, but some unhappy people from not nights before, perhaps at this point. Um, all right, uh, move on to, uh, if Claire's still with us, uh, you don't see her. She may have had to jump off. Um, she's there. We do shade tree. If not, we'll move down the line. All right, Claire may have stepped away. We'll come back to that. Um, let's jump ahead to old business. And uh, Tammy, uh, any reports on our parks and facilities projects? You're on mute. Sorry about that. No uh, just to kind of dovetail on what uh, Sarah was talking about with regards to the tap trail. Yeah, I know, I know we have some notices and stuff that I, I think might already be out on the the website, but if not, I know our, our public information officer is working on those with Steve. Um, I know there's going to be uh, signage that's going to be posted in that Route 30 uh, Radnor Chester area uh, just to alert folks on what's going on. And, and I know there's going to be on the other side of Radnor Chester, if you were you know, coming off of Sinclair, I believe there's going to be uh, a new entrance, like a driveway area for the construction vehicles where they're going to be as well. So it's going to definitely get messy in that area. Um, so, you know, if at any point, uh, you know, we need, you know, additional updates or more information, you know, from Steve back at this board, we can certainly do that. Um, but hopefully the project moves along smoothly uh, and hopefully it gets started. I think that's the key right now. It's just with all the snow, I think it's I think it was supposed to get started at the end of February and now it's delayed. I know the last time I talked to Steve, we weren't really sure when it was going to exactly begin. Um, so I think it just, it's the weather impact right now, obviously is, is critical. Um, so that's, that's one piece. Um, so moving on to Emlyn Tunnel, because I know we've been talking about SEPTA bridge structure removals, which were supposed to happen this upcoming weekend, which have now gotten delayed again until unfortunately the end of March, uh, which was, I think it's the March 27th weekend. We have some information that's gonna be going out about that as well. So we were just about to you know, put all the information out about uh, the, 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 the construction, I'm sorry, the, the project happening uh, this upcoming weekend. And then SEPTA alerted us in the 11th hour uh, that they were gonna have to delay because they had a project that preceded that, that didn't get done and they have to go back and spend their time on that project this upcoming weekend, which I'm going to assume is going to be a moot point as well, because we're expected to have more weather and we also have a foot and a half of snow on the ground. So as of right now, that March 27th weekend is what we're eyeing. Um, there is a backup to that, which is the April 3rd, 4th weekend. So uh, unfortunately, going to impact uh, softball is <laughs> based on the sounds of it, unless we have snow in mid-March, which means that you know the fields obviously wouldn't be open anyway so you know we'll keep evaluating that but that's the game plan right now um which will you know under under normal circumstances with field usage will definitely have an impact at the park so i've already been in touch with little league they're aware so we're coordinating as best as we can um you know they understand and you know we also realize that we want to get the project done uh, we have new fencing that's going to go in as a result of the fencing new trees so we just want to kind of get it get it done and over with. And we're trying to work really closely with SEPTA, uh, you know, and be a good team player there so we can, you know, work and get that project done. Um, so really at this point, you know, any thoughts of, you know, future events and things like that, everything's just far out on the horizon, you know, and just kind of working around this project, of course. Um, Monday night, switching gears real quick, uh, Board of Commissioners authorized uh, a, just a, additions to an agreement that we had with Gilmore and Associates for Fenimore Woods. Uh, so I, I think I kind of brought this up last meeting. Uh, we had some additional work we needed them to go in and do to the plan to revise it that would actually lead to cost saving measures. Um, so for instance, in the upper part of the park, we had two little bridges built up into the upper part of the park. Uh, which once doing uh, cost feasibility was very, it was going to be very expensive. So we eliminated those. Um, and well, we're, the plan is to eliminate those and redesign them as boardwalks. So that'll, that'll change a little bit of the, the features there. But, 
very significant cost savings that we'll have on that ultimately. And as we know, the price of materials and construction and supplies has not waned one bit uh, through, the, through the pandemic, at least not from what we've learned by township bidding standards. Um, so that's something we definitely want to be mindful of uh, as that budget ultimately has been uh, chewed into quite a bit with other projects, i.e. Emlyn Tunnel Comfort Station and i.e. Bo Connor Phillip Home. So um, we're trying to really, you know, set that project up as best as we can for success um, so that we don't end up in a situation where we bid it and it's just so outlandish that we don't have the money, you know, that's there to, you know, to to take care of what, you know, what that difference is gonna be because we're at the, the end of the bond at this point um, that are left from that 2016 borrowing. So uh, in addition, uh, that we're going to reconfigure the lower lot slightly so that it's not as intrusive to the park. Uh, we kind of felt that that was good just overall for the neighbors across the street and just overall to kind of get it back a little bit more in line with what it looks like today. Um, so, you know, that it won't be quite as large and as, penetrating like closer into the park, uh, like where the new playground was going to be, it'll be further down and, 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 and lower where it is currently. So uh, that was something we thought was just better overall. It's, you know, one of those things when we take a look at things really closely, just thought that that, you know, could save some costs, but then also is really just better for the project overall. Um, and then there's some ADA pieces throughout the park uh, that we wanted to increase uh, to where there was some accessibility and then there were other areas where there was not accessibility. So we wanted to reroute those and do a redesign in and around uh, the pavilion structure to make that happen. We felt that was really important. Uh, and then in addition, the, the, uh, this additional contract uh, that was approved also, uh, uh, it also uh, was compensating Gilmore and Associates for assistance in the preparation of a DCNR grant. So uh, the DCNR grant uh, is a very, very big and detailed grant. Um, it definitely is something that we're going to require their assistance on. Uh, so they're going to assist with that. Uh, and, you know, we, we have an opportunity there to maybe gain up to $450,000. Uh, we, we meet with the rep next Wednesday. So we're going to have that conversation and, and the, the rep will guide us through based on the description and scope of the park plan uh, to what you know, what they advise is a good asking amount. And then of course the township, you know, would meet that with a match, which we know we have because we have the money secured uh, ultimately for the project. Uh, we're also, in addition to that, um, so even though Gilmore and Associate, Associates won't be preparing this, but there's a DCED grant, DCED, DCED um, grant that's also available. So we're gonna be working on that. And we believe we have ability to ask up to, I think it's 250,000 on that one. Uh, so I'll, I'll be working with Melissa Kahn, who's our uh, township grant administrator on that. And, um, you know, we'll be using uh, a lot of language that we've already put together in a grant that we actually just submitted, which is also for DCED through their Keystone Community Programs Project, where we learned that we have a $50,000 earmark. So that one we're pretty sure to get. Um, and we just submitted that grant actually today. So that's all in and finalized. And um, so, I mean, if we get that grant, which we don't see any reason why we're not, um, that's going to more than pay what the contract extension was right there uh, for Gilmore and Associates, which was just 27000 so it wasn't too much. Um, and we're going to gain that back and more, uh, just ultimately. So we have some really great grant prospects ahead of us, um, which is exciting because it's, it's a great qualifying project. Um, typically these kind of projects that are comprehensive and involve lots of stormwater pieces um, tend to gain the appeal, particularly DCNR. So we're hopeful that this is one that could land us some extra cash for the, not extra cash, but offsetting the project cash um, for this project. So we can hopefully get to bid soon. So we're going to be working through that. So once we we get the revised plan and, and Steve and I have a chance to go through that and dot I's and cross T's, uh, it'll be a matter of getting the bid specifications together and then getting it out to bid, you know, hopefully in the next couple months. Um, it's certainly a plan I can bring back to this board and show you um, so you can have sort of like a last look at it um, just to kind of see the things that we've done. But there's nothing substantial that's changed since you and the commissioners have last seen it other than those little pieces. Um, 
that's my that's my house phone. Hold on. <laughs> it it does nothing but ring all day long. <laughs> yep. Uh, as I'm sure everyone else it does. So um, so we're really excited. I mean, this has been a, a you know it's been a long uh, you know long moving project, but ultimately you know we feel really confident that we're we're on a, a better pace right now to to hopefully bring this thing hopefully into start of construction by the end of the year. Um, it's definitely realistic. So, as, you know, as long as we don't hit any snags or any issues along the way, we should be in good shape. That's great. Thanks. Thanks for the update, uh, Tammy, or the updates. Sure. Tammy. We can continue the zigzagging across this agenda, making a real mess of it. Uh, <laughs> anything on Shade Tree for us? Um, I did hear everything everybody said. I just was out yelling at my dog in the backyard, so I had to... Uh, so Might be a segue to our next topic, but <laughs> okay. No, but, I, and, but I did want to say that we are in winter with shade trees, so there really isn't many anything really going on. We continue to still um, have applications for um, building and things that you know gets approved through shade tree. But uh, in terms of projects and things, we're you know we're waiting, figure out what if a spring planting like we did and a fall planting, etc. So I'll keep you posted. Great, thanks a lot, Claire. All right, I think we've gotten through the reports now. Now we go back to old business and uh, um, I will turn the floor over for, to Mary. I know we had uh, an article she shared with, with us, which was sad, um, but certainly illustrative of some of the points that we've discussed here. Uh, anything new to report, anything old to report, any additional topics we wanna to talk about with um, our, our, our man, man's, man's and women's best friend in the parks? I don't have anything new to report other than, yeah, that article I circulated, which was just a couple of days ago, and that was really sad. I mean, that's one of the things that that folks forget about dogs not on leashes, the fights that they get into with other dogs. It's really, if you've ever seen one of them, it's really awful. Or if you've ever been involved in one of them, it's really awful. Um, but Claire, I believe you um, had done some additional research, and you might want to share um, that with us. Yes, I didn't. I, it, I don't know if we can call it research, but I reached out to some residents of Radnor who use the willows regularly with dogs. And I um, got a little bit of feedback. And I just because I, I when I called them, I just said, you know, we're looking, we're talking about it. We just want to make sure that we include everybody. And some things that I got back were that people are definitely interested in having, um, you know, signage or ordinances that are clear. So, you know, they, everybody wants to be, have their dogs be safe. They love the willows. They are open to and understand that uh, two people I talked to understand that, you know, the willows are going to be, the idea is to be used for some events and that that wouldn't be a time to, you know, have dogs coming through that entrance and that if there was other entrances. As I also did some um, personal research. I took, I went over to the Okahoking Preserve I don't know if you guys know that in Westchester, I mean, on mm -hmm. Westchester Pike. And they have done a really good job of, with signage and leash areas and unleashed areas. And, um, you know, people really do seem to follow the rules. So um, that I was kind of cheered by that. Oh, oh, someone else said something, you know, that people who are kind of newer dog owners, that leash rules are, are becoming more popular. <laughs> so they are expecting it. Um, so it's really kind of people that have had dogs for hundreds of years, you know, whatever, 50 years. And that, that this is what we've always done to just get them on board. But the people I talked to felt really positive that it could be done in a way that was inclusive to residents and people who use the park and even non-residents. Were they more dog owners with people with dogs? Or yes, just, I, I, I spoke to three different people, all dog owners who use it. Um, and then, of course, it led into Tammy, what conversation about, oh, well, how, how can we get the, you know, the trails cleaned up? <laughs> like it, it gave me, it, it came in, inside the willows, right? And I, you know, which, which is another topic of maintenance for our public works, which are overworked. So, um, you know, I think people, especially with Willis Park Preserve is trying to be successful with that project um, in coordination with residents. So working on really getting that information out there um, so stakeholders can be part of that. And, you know, signage was the biggest thing um, to kind of help people understand when's a good time to 
where and when to have your dog off a leash. I have a good friend with a German Shepherd who um, loves Oka Hawking, but knows which areas somebody stands in and sent, gives you tickets and takes her dog off the leash whenever she's not near there. Because it's a beautiful property to have your dog off leash. And most people, I mean, I've been there a number of times with her and, and everybody's dog is off leash in certain areas of the park, even though you're not allowed to anywhere except the dog park. And, and, and we've never had a problem. And I'll tell you, um, I mentioned to her that Skunk Hollow allows dogs off leash. And I went with her the other weekend because I wanted to see how it was. And it was a Saturday. I mean, it was a, one of the beautiful days before it had snowed. And I was actually really impressed because I too have seen dogs that don't behave well off leash. And it may just have been, I was there on a great day. And, but everybody's dog was really well behaved. I, I even, um, at one point there were, there was kind of an older couple coming by and they had walking, you know, the hiking trail sticks. And my friend called out, oh, my dog's off leash. Would you like me to put the dog on leash? And the person, all the dogs here are off leash. Like they just kind of expect, <laughs> and they were like, no, it's no big deal. They, they didn't want to be bothered while they were on their walk. So um, I just would be cautious about, and I don't have a dog, so I don't have skin in this game. But I know a lot of dog owners who feel it's really nice to have places like Skunk Hollow where it is permitted. And I actually, it was interesting to me because I was looking for things like this. I noticed there was like signage near where the, um, th there was, there were signage that said, you know, there's heavy equipment up here in use. Please don't, you know, please make sure your dog is leashed. It's not safe. So I was actually, sure there can always be more signage, but um, I was impressed that it was pretty clear in certain areas. Um, and that most of the dog owners, at least that day, seemed pretty responsible. I, I absolutely see the, I think the issue is that Skunk Hollow is right up to, next to Willow, the Willows, right? So you have to somehow create that barrier if you're going to continue to allow it in Skunk Hollow. I, I mean, the one thing I would say is I know most communities don't allow, aren't allowing this anymore. And I understand there are risks associated with it. You know, it might be one of the reasons people come to Radnor and if it brings yeah. people to town and it brings them to our businesses, you know, that's not necessarily a bad thing or it makes them realize it's a desirable place to live. I don't know, just thoughts. I mean, like I said, I don't have a dog, so I'm not getting a dog anytime soon. <laughs> it's not, it's uh, not my, my, my fight, but I, I know that there are a lot of people who really valuable, value the ability to walk with their dog off leash as opposed to just having their dog someplace like Harford Park where you just the dogs all run and the parent and the not the parents <laughs> the owners stand around <laughs> you can tell the kind of dog owners i hang out with <laughs> christina go ahead you're on you're still on mute sorry so it. and i do have a dog i have a golden retriever and i have two 11 year old boys so um and i actually got a retriever because i just didn't want any issues so i will say that i've seen two children personally who were attacked by a dog that was their own dog and because it was like a three-year-old like literally attacked near their eye and and it wasn't my dogs or my children but I will tell you that um I would love to hear from I mean I'm not a vet right but I would love to actually hear from a vet about the psychology behind it because apparently what I hear it could be a smell it could be a person it's it's unpredictable that's my issue with this is um so what if somebody has a dog that's leashed and they have a three-year-old or four-year-old and there's a dog that's unleashed that creates a lot and i have uh two guinea pigs uh, two cats a dog i have twins i'm like the dog whisperer <laughs> i love animals i will talk to any creature i talk to plants but i will tell you this is a very very sensitive topic for me because i don't like animals getting attacked and I don't like little kids obviously so I do I would be interested to hear about just some thoughts about what you know some experts think you know what what's the background of it so I don't know if we've ever explored that but I will tell you that I've seen the attacks and um I loved the article thank you Mary I read it like twice because oh, I was so, so I, it was so difficult for me to hear when she said that like this was her person you know this was her mate and that, that they did everything and then that was gone like that and even the owner, she expressed how the owner tried to grip the dog. So you might know your dog, but you don't know your dog in certain situations. There's no way you can predict that. So I don't know. I'm all about the signage. And I'm, I'm at the end of the day, like a leash can be the difference between life and death. I mean, and it's scary, but the only other option is to make a dog park, right? Like a designated, like, like, here we go. I don't know about that, but I just, I don't know. I'm just a bit sensitive to uh, 
dogs and, and little kids. So that's just my thoughts. So sorry about the sadness, but that article was really sad. I couldn't stop. I started crying. <laughs> Wasn't sure I wanted to share it with you guys, but I thought, well, it's timely and it's relevant. So, and then the death, whatever, the dog died. I was like, oh, here we go. Like, it was, it was tough. So that's tough. So sorry. No, no, thanks. A anyone else uh, on this topic before we wrap this topic up, at least? Yeah, I just wanted to report that I did have a chance to check in uh, with all of the other townships that Mary had referenced in the presentation. Mm -hmm. Um, so overall, what I heard is that even though some of them have, you know, some very detailed and lengthy uh, ordinance detail and information that overall they have issues too. Um, there's, you know, there's even when dogs are on leash and supposed to be on leash, they have trouble with, you know, people coming to the park and they're not. Uh, they see it happen. Um, you know, it's, it's definitely an ongoing topic. I know Hillary over at Tradifferent told me that their board is constantly dealing with dogs. Like it's just a constant topic that like, you know, goes away and then it resurfaces again. Um, as a matter of fact, a lot of the, the language over there, which, you know, Tradifferent has uh, even changed in the last couple of years, um, you know, as a result of them trying to make adjust adjustments. So overall, it's, it's something that everyone's chasing. Um, you know, and constantly seeming to try and like, you know, mitigate and revise. Um, I also, uh, I understand most of the enforcement is sort of self-policing and, you know, the, the, there's not, you know, parks and recreation staff getting involved. It's more, you know, going to the police. Like if, you know, if you're having an issue, we need you to call police. If there's a legitimate problem, we need you to call police. Like it's that constant education of that piece because everyone is challenged with enforcement. Uh, the one thing I did find it intriguing though on a side note was at Lower Marion, they have part-time park stewards that go around um, all day from the time the parks open to the time the parks close in two shifts. So they do like an AM basically and a PM shift. And I thought that was intriguing. So they budget it as part-time staff. Um, I think they said they make like 12 or $15 an hour. It's, you know, within their budget, they have eight people. It's usually retirees. Uh, I thought that was interesting just for a number of different reasons, as you can imagine, just because there's lots of things that go on in the park when we all can't be there in every park. Um, although, yeah, I, I forget how many more parks we have than Lower Marion. I know we have more, um, but, you know, it would, it would really be like one person basically covering, it would be like the, the school district security guard, you know, he kind of floats from building to building, you know, so it'd be a very similar situation where, you know, that person would float and kind of like when this matter would come up, if we had a change in ordinance, they would be the, the person who's out there and doing the enforcement. So, I, you know, I'm not quite sure that we would ever be in that situation. Um, let's see, Newtown commented about signage. So that was one thing that they had let me know that signage really has to be in so many locations for everybody to know the rules every trailhead, every trail entrance. And if you think about it at the Willows and Skunk Hollow and Sawmill, I mean, we would have a plethora of signage everywhere to let people know what the rule is. So uh, believe me, I think signage has its place, um, but I don't know how, you know, you, you enable everybody to see it, um, you know, unless it's at every single trailhead. So that's just another, you know, item to concern, you know, to, to consider, you know, if there is a future change that's requiring a leash. Um, so overall, like I said, it sounds like there are a lot of issues and there are a lot of concerns, you know, not just in Radnor. Um, but one thing I will say, I, I find the biggest issue to be like really in the parking lots. Um, yes. You know, the Hartford, mm -hmm. I was just at Hartford the other day, I went up to check on the construction project going on up there. Mm -hmm. And even with all the snow, um, you know, it was, you know, the owners with their dogs, you know, their, their dogs running around, uh, a man had pulled in, he had two giant brown golden retrievers, and they were just so excited to be at the dog park. And they just jumped out of the car and they ran through the parking lot, and they ran down to the park and, you know, it happened to be a day that it wasn't that busy. Um, because obviously, the mainline school night is in, an, in full operation right now. So there's not many people over there. So the lot was in less use, but you know, when you have high traffic time, it, you know, that definitely is one of the bigger issues when you have dogs running around or you get out of your car and the dog comes up to you. So, 
you know, that's definitely something that, you know, even fencing and a, a fenced in area or a dog trail or a dog area, you know, it's just unless you have folks following the, the rules, which, you know, what are the rules and where are they communicated? And then how do you adapt everybody to what they are? Um, it's, it's difficult, I think, to achieve. Um, but if we're talking about, you know, a matter of, are we gonna, you know, require dogs to be on leash or not in certain areas, either way, it's gonna be really difficult for us to, to change the culture, you know, that's there right now. And I think it's gonna take a lot of time and effort and energy. Um, I do agree it's, it would be worth it if it is a matter of, you know, saving someone or another dog from being injured or a child or someone, you know, from being bitten. Um, but, you know, this is a double-edged sword conversation, um, you know, just as, you know, there's people who are going to be for something like this, there's going to be a lot of people who aren't so much in favor of it. Um, Tammy, I, I agree with you on the parking lots. I was going to say as much, because again, I'm over there so often, the parking lot at the Willows, I'm not sure about elsewhere, but at the Willows is definitely the worst place. I mean, it's, it's kind of a zoo over there. Um, and I've got, I got the photos to prove it, but this continues to be a concern um, uh, for the Willows folks. Um, and it continues to be brought up by the caterers that they're hoping to bring on board. They bring it up every time about what are you gonna do about the dog problem in the parking lot? So there's, I mean, I, I guess I've said this before, but I just didn't want that to get lost, that that's another factor to consider, at least at the Willows, at least in the parking lot area, you know, between the willows and the parking lot. Thank, thanks, Mary. So, so I guess we, we, we'll continue to talk about this. It sounds like our, we, we are continuing to, to advance the dialogue with some of the research and recon and different points of view. I think uh, if we're gonna to get to a point where we're making recommendations, we're gonna to want to have some public input um, in a more traditional sense. Um, but uh, yeah, I think we should continue the dialogue as we go forward and, and, and uh, continue to do our research and talk to folks in the community and try to get a sense, of, even anecdotally, what we can get uh, amongst the folks that we're talking to. Anybody else on uh, the topic and move on? Okay. Uh, I have, a, it's not an agenda item, just a, an aside that's probably not entirely parks related, but at least it came up at a meeting last time. I want to just continue the dialogue, not dialogue, but just an update on it. That is, uh, I raised with Commissioner Farhi the uh, parcel that's directly by, behind my house, the uh, Presbyterian Children's Village, which is for sale. It's at 452 Roberts Road. Uh, just to, to, there has been a, a more formal dialogue that's been to, brought out by um, Commissioner Borowski. There was a, a town hall, I think there were about 85 people on a call the other night. Commissioner uh, Moroni, and Commissioner Farhi as well, Lane Schaefer. And then a number of folks from the township, uh, Bill White, uh, Steve Mercini, and some others that did a nice job of talking about the land development and whatnot. And a bunch of ideas were being thrown out there about desired use. And, and to the extent that, that we come in, in contact with folks out there, I know that all the commissioners were interested to hear about the public's input on that. One of the topics that came up was the potential for park usage. And obviously there's a dollar figure associated with that. And Tammy's, uh, someone actually asked about ball fields and Bill White volunteered that Tammy would certainly tell us that we definitely need more ball fields. So you, your ears might have been ringing the other night, Tammy. Uh, but in, in, in a serious note, I know that it's a, it's a big parcel of land. There were a lot of discussion about open space preservation and potential uses outside of private use. And to the extent uh, uh, folks are uh, inclined to give input to commissioners, I know that they were openly asking for public input. At least a third of the, of the BOC was at this meeting. Mm -hmm. So you can spread the word on that and certainly share your thoughts as well. And to the extent I hear things being a resident here, I'll share them to the extent they impact this board as well. Bill, what's, I mean, I don't, I don't know if I've ever been there. Um, is that accessible? I mean, could I like drive up there and poke around and look you, at you it? Could, it? You could, it's entirely, it's vacant now. And there's, there's a number of structures. Um, there's a, there's a, one of the folks was a, an architect. There is apparently a, a famous architect who did a mansion there and it was, either Reading Railroad or Pennsylvania Railroad, someone who was um, CEO uh, of that lived there at one point in time. I think it's around 40 acres. There's some essentially dormitory buildings that were there for what, what were the residents of the village and a gymnasium and a classroom building and activity center. Uh, but you can walk all around it. There's a drop oh, okay. accessible from Roberts Road. And okay. uh, at this point in time, other than some increased police patrols, which um, Bill White told us about, uh, there really isn't anyone 
Okay, yeah, yeah I just want to check it out. There are some private property signs that say do not enter, but you can ignore those. It's Radnor. I'll, I'll, I'll wave my- I only know because somebody I'll else- I'll wave my like, park and rent that badge. Property. And there are big signs that say do not enter. And I was like, okay. <laughs> the, the gym, I mean, do they have a big basketball court in there? I just, I'm thinking, because I know we've talked before about the lack of community access to sporting facilities. Do you know what the condition of the basketball court is, Bill? I don't. I don't know its condition. I know they have one, and I know um, in the summers and whatnot, you can hear folks uh, from my backyard uh, playing in there and bouncing basketballs and things. So I assume that that it's at least fu uh, functional. I don't know the condition okay. of the side um, there. It seems as though a lot of the buildings um, uh, are a bit aged, uh, putting aside the the, 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 the stone mansion. Uh, yeah, the dormitories that look like, yeah. They, they do yeah. look older, but I think I don't think most people would be looking at that property for the equip for what's there already. I was just thinking, you know, basketball courts are not indoor basketball spaces are not cheap to build, and you need the space for them. So, was, in terms of what the community needs, cor cor correct. And, and you know, one of the topics that came up actually, a number of folks brought up uh, sort of what's become a, a rallying cry with some is something like the crack over in Haverford Township. Uh, hey, you have a couple existing buildings that are salvageable and actually beyond salvageable, very, very, very fine condition. Wouldn't it be wonderful? Obviously, it's a, it's a, a, a very preliminary discussion. And of course, uh, if someone comes along and buys it, then, then that, that's that. But um, uh, there was a dialogue about that. And it was certainly something I, I was interested in, in you know, discussing as well, uh, whether it's you know, gardens or trails or whatnot. Uh, there's only so much space. And we have made an investment in the township and other areas to preserve space. Um, and, and, you know, expand the recreational uh, footprint that we have. So 40 acres is hard to come by. Uh, yeah. Yep, absolutely. So I, as I said, I'll, I'll have my ear to the ground on that and to extend there's new, new information that is at least tangentially related to our work here, I'll, I'll report back as I hear uh, about that. Uh, and and that, I can share with you any future meetings too. I'll share with the Parks Board any future meetings that are taking place. Thank you, that'd be great. That'd be great. Yeah, that would be great. I'm sure people would like to know about that. Yeah, and just this is just me speaking, and not as a park board member, just as a resident who was on the line. It sounded as though there was a real genuine interest uh, for ideas and and, and whatnot. Um, uh, understanding that there's a price that comes with these things. I, I I don't know that there's great enthusiasm among the folks on the call, both in in the township uh, uh, and, and as residents that are enthused about the thought of a, of a large development there or other uses that might not be as uh, uh, well received, I'll say. So uh, I know there's, a, there's an interest to hear things and whether or not there's any traction for that, uh, yeah, who knows. All right, that, that is the end of what we had on the agenda. Uh, I know we have no public participation because there's no one left and we've already done that. Does anybody else have anything they wanna bring up or either for tonight or to put on a future agenda? All right, all right, well, with that, I guess I'll take a motion to adjourn our meeting. Move to adjourn. All right, and, and I'll second the, the, the motion. Uh, so uh, all in favor, aye. Yeah, so aye. Uh, thank you everybody for being on here. I know it's a, a busy time and uh, everybody stay well. And uh, one of these years we'll actually get to uh, say hi in person again. Yeah, that'd be nice. Sounds thank good. Thanks everybody. Well.